Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where we need to get some repairs done here and then we're going to go in search of some challenge. Now we're going to get our beta pod done here in five days. So that is magnificent. Let's kick forward those five days and we know that we need more drop weight, right? More drop weight is actually what we need next. So we're going to hop in here and drop tonnage. We need the upgraded communication networks and drive repairs for that. So... To those ends, let's see, this is upgraded communication networks here. So this gives us another vehicle slot. Okay. That would take six days. Out of curiosity, the drive repairs would take how long? 10 days? So 15 total days for that. And then an additional six days for getting the max drop tonnage up. So we've got some prerequisites to do here. Let's grab this one first. I'll get the crew moving. And that's okay. So we're going to continue to take forward until the Black Knight is done. But we should deploy now because we're going to have a financial report very soon. Uh, Plato and Hardcase are apparently fighting. Hmm. Noble family, huh? Hardcase is trying to pull rank. We'll punish them both. Get out of here. So they're both unavailable for seven days. That's, of course, mildly problematic for us. Uh... We're going to have to take this financial report then. That's not ideal. Not ideal at all. I was going to deploy there, but we're going to have to take this financial report because we don't have backup mech warriors, right? Although we could get some now that the beta hall is done. There are only two, Gorgon and Romeo, and I would rather both of them remain in the simulator for right now. So we're going to hire both of these. That's absolutely fine. And we're going to continue to tick forward for three days here, but we did just finish up our upgraded communication networks. Next up, we need our drive repairs. So that's going to take 10 days. Take a bit, but we'll get it done. Okay, we'll tick forward three and then we'll deploy. Although we should definitely make sure that we've done our training first. So Brick, what do you got? You can grab a point of tactics. That seems fine. Capo has nothing to be done. Coach has nothing to be done. Gorgon has nothing to be done. That's not surprising. A point of guts for GB. Sounds good. Nothing for Hardcase. Nothing for Magus. Nothing for Panic. Plato. Romeo, however, can grab a point of gunnery. Okay, that sounds good. You're a backup mech warrior anyway. And then Weasel Cakes. Yep, that seems fine. Okay, let's see what we can get as far as a challenge here. What do we got, Darius? I mean, there's one three-star here. It's an ambush convoy. Should be pretty doable. Who's this against? Steiner. I mean, we'd give up basically all of the rep that we just got with them. <laughs> I'd kind of prefer not to do that. This is actually pretty high pay here. It's a Steiner blackout mission. What is the max tonnage on this? Because we might not be able to deploy our preferred mechs on a blackout mission. We can accept this contract, although I want to see maximum of 400 tons. You're not allowed to drop eight units, only six. Okay, so I would rather not. I'd rather drop our full, full lance here. So maybe we run something like this. This is Steiner against Planetary Government. We're unlikely to get good salvage, but we could definitely run somewhere right down the middle here and make a good amount of money here and have it be not super difficult. It's Planetary Government, but somewhat difficult. And that'll buy us at least a little bit of space, right? Now, we can't drop this because we don't have the tonnage, so we know that. We're just going to drop this as is. Yeah, the Black Knight is under under tonnage. Darius thinks this is going to be hard. Darius is probably wrong about that. I'm not too concerned about the salvage here. This is in Badlands, so the Wraith is going to have some heat issues. But this will take a little bit to load, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay, so here we are, all loaded up. I heard a helicopter as we were loading, so we might have a use for those SAM missiles in our crossbow. That would be absolutely great. What else do we have here? Solid intel that the enemy lance is in the region. Okay, we do have some allies. And the scout lance is up over here. We could deploy, like, here, round this corner, put our fire support potentially up on this hill, although I think we'd have a hard time climbing that. Alternatively, we could spawn here and have a clean line of fire straight on down. 
And I think that's a good place to spawn. So we'll do that for the time being. And we'll see if there are any other enemies. This might be a quick one. We'll see. We would like a milk run that would make 1.2 million if it's not going to be... Like, I don't really want it to be, like... I want it to be either difficult or not. <laughs> one or the other. Not somewhere in between. So we see a Phoenix Hawk and we see a Fireball. But we should absolutely... Well, we shouldn't reserve here. The reason we shouldn't reserve, of course, is because we currently have spawn protection. So the Centaur needs to move out over here. And that gives us eyes on a Firefly as well as on an Assassin. Nothing too spooky here. They're facing away from us. Although that's going to change before they lose their spawn protection. And we're going to move our Hoplite just out over here. Coordinates received. And we'll brace it. And our Apollo is going to position somewhere out over... And we'll leave it in the cover. There we go. Next up is our Scimitar, which needs to accelerate. So we're going to get it going. There we go. And now they're going to have a couple of movements. Okay, there are reinforcements up over here. That's an Ignis. Noted. Go up over here. Okay, that assassin is in rough terrain. It's probably pretty accessible right now. I wonder if we can climb up this over here. We'll find out. Okay, so next up is going to be our crossbow. The crossbow can absolutely park somewhere out over here for the time being. We don't need to move it in very far. This is pretty ideal for the crossbow's range. Really. So that firefly is backing off over here. Okay. Yes, Next up is our wraith, which is going to have heat issues. We can put the wraith out over here. Double time. Let's go. We're just trying to keep to the side to keep our firing corridor clear, of course. Commander. The shadow hawk is going to do the same, and we're going to position Commander. down over this direction. Something up over here, I think. I did hear a helicopter as we were loading. So there's a helicopter out here somewhere. Did our ally have one? No, I don't think so. Okay. Ready for order. The Black Knight is going to head up over this direction. Once again, Move. sticking to the side of the firing corridor. And that Phoenix Hawk closes in. Okay. So, at this point, can our centaur can get in behind this Phoenix Hawk. Positioning potentially here. Or like here. I think I prefer this position. Drop we can that. almost certainly take out this Phoenix Hawk from here. These hit odds aren't great. We failed our sensor roll, and that's why. We still might be able to take out this Phoenix Hawk if we roll well. Wow, look at that. It's only got one energy weapon. Okay. Roger that. Not great on that roll. And that's mostly just because we failed that sensor roll, which is sad. But the Phoenix Hawk is definitely taking a lot of damage in its rear arc. I like the choice of attacking this assassin here. That's kind of who I was thinking about firing on with the fire support units for the moment. And then these guys would weave up over this direction. Yeah, I don't hate that. So this fireball closes in here. And goes for our Apollo. It's very close in. Noted. Standing by. So the Hoplite would be wanting to sit like right out over here and fire on this assassin, right? Did we fill our sensor roll again? No, we didn't. Okay, that's just target moved. Fair enough. So what do we want to fire on here? We've got this Phoenix Hawk, which hit odds are okay on, but we could stray shot our centaur. Hit odds are not okay on this assassin. There's that VTOL. Okay. Fantastic. I think we fire on the assassin. I think our chances of stray shotting out over here are quite low. We're just going to pot shot this assassin for the time being. Locked on target. Okay, we didn't hit, but I'm not surprised about that. That's deeply, deeply unsurprising to me. So we'll see what the assassin does. Does it close in over here? Potentially. Our friend the Apollo helpfully stray shots us. And head I'm hits hit, us. Commander. Very rude. Very rude there. And where did that other one hit? Not actually sure, but I think that was two large lasers. Yeah, shoot that Apollo. He deserves it. What a jerk. 
Okay, uh, it hit this leg. Okay. For now, that's reasonably fine. I don't like starting up these fires here either, to be honest. That Apollo really screwed us over. Okay, basically no damage coming in from that assassin. Sounds good. What else do they have going on here? Probably not a whole lot. That Firefly is going to run up over this way. Okay. We haven't gotten to move a lot of our units yet, so this will be reasonably fine. That assassin has built up a little bit of instability. Laser AMS taking out six of those missiles. Wow. Okay, so that Ignis is up over here. It's a Centurion-Scorpion combo. Okay. Nothing too scary there. I like it. So the VTOL moves in and attacks our centaur. It does hit it with a large laser, which is unfortunate, but all of its missiles hit, or rather missed. That VTOL should be pretty shoot downable. That's, that's definitely a word. Do we go for the Phoenix Hawk here? I kind of prefer the backstab angle on it, to be honest. So we can head out over like this direction. And then fire on this guy. I don't think we fire on the VTOL. We fire on the Assassin. Hit odds aren't the best, but its armor is low. We just want to soften it up a little bit. It's in un it's in rough terrain, so we get a lot of unsteady. We almost got rid of it. Will be done. Almost. I'm going to take the Scimitar into, if we can, into rear arc of this Phoenix Hawk. Unfortunately, we can't. We can put it in rear arc of this Fireball, though. So we would then look at putting it somewhere around here. Roger that. And we'd fire on the fireball's rear arc. We may take it out here. And we did. Phenomenal. So it's gone. We don't need to worry about that Are now. There none who can stand before me? So Take next order. up, we've got our Black Knight. And we can definitely move the Black Knight up to about Rolling. here. I would rather fire at neither of these, to be honest. But I guess we can fire on the Phoenix Hawk. We may stray shot the Scimitar, but... And we did stray shot the Scimitar there. Losing lots of armor. Oh, you're fine. Ish. <laughs> that did do a lot, actually. I'm so here. the Wraith is going to close in up over this direction. We've got that field inhibitor, so we stay. can just position here. Field inhibitor is on, so we are outside of minimum range. Confirmed. Let's fire on this Phoenix Hawk. We'll just do a little bit of damage out over here. That's going to build up a lot of heat on our Wraith. No doubt about it. Now, the Shadow Hawk can climb up over this way. I'm going to send it this direction. I know I said I was going to take these guys out over here, but there's not really a huge reason to do so. I'm going to move our crossbow to here, and we're going to fire on the Dragoon. Oh, wow, these hit odds are terrible. 11 evasive, that's why. So we've got the SAM missiles, but this is not the time to use them. Yeah. I think it's the Phoenix Hawk, to be honest. I don't love the Phoenix Hawk choice here, but we don't really have the hit odds on anything else. Let's do okay. So, getting a little bit more armor reduction armor. on that Phoenix Hawk, and that means that our Centaur should head up after the Fireball up over here. Yeah, that is what that means. Or Firefly, I guess. That's a Firefly. Never mind. We're still going to go after it. So, the Phoenix Hawk jumps. That's going to build up instability. And it's going to fire on our Scimitar, which is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, I really don't care about that. Okay, next up is our Centaur. And the Centaur is going to position about here. This is definitely not ideal range, but we can still fire on the Firefly. If we roll well, we can kill it, but odds are not great. Roger that. And we got a structure exposure anyway, and we're closing in on it, right? If we had rolled a decent crit there, we definitely could have taken it down there. But unfortunately, we did not roll a good crit. That assassin is now unsteady, but it does move very soon. In fact, it moves instantly. Literally right now. So we don't get to take advantage of that. Unless it jumps. If it jumps, then we're fine. We'll see where it goes. 
Any moment now, assassin. You can figure it out. Okay, it just runs back and lobs a couple missiles at our Black Knight. That is very irrelevant. We don't care about that. Okay, so with that in mind, next up is going to be something. Is that that Firefly? It is. Okay. So the Firefly is going to continue to run away. It's unfortunate. We're going to chase it with our Centaur, but I'm not sure how much we can actually get done there. So the Hoplite is in full-on fire support mode, right? And we need to position up over here position. so that we hopefully don't stray shot. 31.5? I guess we'll take that. Yeah, I'm not surprised that we don't hit. We're just having a hard time actually getting these guys dialed in at this point. They're just in slightly awkward positions at this moment. So the Apollo is going to fire on this assassin and... I guess I get some Inferno in there. That's fine. That assassin is definitely weakened. No doubt about that. So our Apollo is going to step forward up over here. It only has direct fire LOS on one target. 22.8 on that. We could also... Actually, we could fire at the Phoenix Hawk. And I think that's probably what we end up doing here. Yeah. We're going to fire on that Phoenix Hawk. 10-4. So additional damage into the Phoenix Hawk there, but it didn't cluster very well. No doubt about that. Standing Let's by. get our Scimitar into the Phoenix Hawk's rear arc if we can. We actually cannot. We can only get up into like this side arc. Going so we'll position throttle. it here and we could fire on the, the Dragoon or we could fire on the Phoenix Hawk. Hit odds are better on the Phoenix Hawk. Full on enemy. So that's some internal damage and the Phoenix Hawk is now Target's unsteady. So hit. that's a very big deal. A very big deal indeed. It doesn't move until phase 10. So our crossbow is going to have a pretty free shot on it. But that's like the only the only unit that'll have a free shot on it, other than this Wraith, I suppose. We could just walk in and melee it with our Wraith, to be honest. This would be a charge. I don't want I don't want to actually charge it. Yeah, we can't quite get in there without sprinting. So we'd have to position I'm like going. here. Field inhibitor would have to be off, but I don't think we have the heat to pull this off. Yeah, we're going to have heat issues with this thing. So we're just going to close in and hit it in this side arc here. Its armor is very, 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 very low. So that Phoenix Hawk is almost certainly dead. The next shot we get on it. Scorpion moves up, fires on our friend the Apollo, and misses. That's okay. Cool. So we would have to go around this direction with our centaur, right? And the question is, can our centaur eliminate this firefly nice and quickly? That depends on how far we can get. We'll see. Receiving you. Our crossbow is in an interesting position here, actually. So we can position Roger here. That. We have a rear arc on this VTOL. We can fire on the Ignis. Or we can almost certainly guarantee the kill on the Phoenix Hawk. And that's what we're going to take. I'm not going to fire the lasers because I don't really want a stray shot. All right. That's a lot of damage to the Phoenix Hawk, but those were kind of crappy on the crits. Kind of crappy crits, indeed. And just terrible clustering. Okay. That's fine. It's just mildly awkward. So they're going to fire on our Apollo here, doing a tiny amount of splash damage. Nothing too major there. And next up is our Black Knight, which can absolutely advance to here and should eliminate this Phoenix Hawk. Got it, Commander. That was a lot of destruction. Torso nope. destruction, leg destruction, arm destruction. Phoenix Hawk is knocked down. Reserved back to phase Starting seven to as well. But he's not dead. This guy is a survivor. No doubt about that. Our Shadow Hawk can definitely make its way up over here. I kind of like this position. Go, go, it would give go. us eyes on this Scorpion, on this Ignis, and on this Dragoon, although we're not really in a position to attack any of them. We are instead just going to roll some crits in this Phoenix Hawk, and it should absolutely die. There's no way it survives that. Phenomenal. Enemy down. Okay. So now the question is the Firefly. Orders. How close can we get? We can get to Ready here, to run. and that's a solid shot. 
Let's see how we roll. We might be able to take out the Firefly here. Aye, Maybe. Aye. Engine crit, gyro crit, heat sink crit. That was a but the Firefly is not down. That is sad. Very sad indeed. We're just slightly too far away at this point. So the assassin jumps and fires on our Apollo. That assassin has been jumping a lot and is an excellent target. Actually where it's at for all of our fire support units. Indeed. Yeah, that's really solid. Just checking when we're moving. Okay, that all seems fine. They're firing on the Scorpion. They're not getting anything done really. But that's okay. So the Scimitar is definitely going to head around this direction, probably starting to take some pot shots at the VTOL here. How many evasive does that have right now? Eight? Okay, noted. Phase 15, though, they have three movers, so they're going to be moving their Centurion, which shoots at our Shadowhawk and doesn't get much done. They're also going to be moving their VTOL and their Ignis all in this phase. However, we do get to move our crossbow and we can step up over here and have unobstructed way. LOS on this Dragoon. So we could definitely fire on this. And with Sam, that brings us up to 32%. It's not great in terms of the hit odds, but we can at least soften it up a little bit. Okay. So we'll see what they decide to do with the Dragoon. We definitely need to get that shot down. But it's awkwardly far away. This whole lance is awkwardly far away. And it'll be a little bit tough to get there. They are going to be moving this Firefly eventually as well. The Dragoon moved away. Okay. Orders? So the Rays can position here, here and keep pot shotting the Dragoon. We're not going to fire the SRM, just the medium lasers and sink a little heat. This is all a pot shot. Yeah, we don't succeed that, but if we had, it would have been great. If we if we don't, we don't really lose anything. So that's fine. No problem whatsoever there. I would love to get the Black Knight up over here. It doesn't have jump jets, of course. Ooh, he just stray shot his friend there with the PPC, doing 52 damage onto that Ignis. Right into that side arc. I like it. So our Hoplite is going to advance up over here where it has a better angle. It can shoot at any of these. And it fires at the Ignis. Absolutely. But it could stray shot as well. Sadly, that wasn't great. We missed the Gauss. We missed the Autocannon. We hit the Rockets, but they didn't do very much. We really need to hit the Gauss if we're going to do something there. So the Firefly is now firing on the Centaur. That's okay. We can definitely get into a reasonable position with it now. So next up is our Apollo, which is going to continue to advance over I'm here. There. And we can fire on the Dragoon. 37% ch chance there. 50% on the Ignis. Is this into that weak side? This is side arc, and it's going to be into the right side. Okay. It's still the best hit odds, so we'll take it. And we'll just soften up the Ignis's armor a little bit. Next up, of course, is our Scimitar, which is going to want to position up over here, and we're going to pot shot at that Dragoon. Absolutely. Ooh, basically no damage there. Yikes. That didn't do very much. <laughs> very sad. Next up is our Black Knight, which is going to continue to advance over here. The Assassin is actually not quite in LOS over this way, so we're just continuing to focus up over here. These hit odds are very, very, very low. Got the angle. But we hit both of those, surprisingly. We didn't break through the armor, but that Dragoon has very, very weak armor now. So that's good. Our Shadowhawk can advance here. I would rather it not be in the unstable terrain. So we can position here. We can fire on this Assassin. We can fire on the Dragoon, but the hit odds aren't great there. I think we fire on the Assassin here, and we probably fire the M-Pod, considering this is softened up already. And our machine gun is jammed. So let's just get some damage in there. Firing on top. As a structure exposure and some arm destruction on that assassin. And it's now unsteady. I've my AC okay, 
So our centaur at this point wants to finish up the firefly. Unfortunately, we don't get better than a side arc on it. Affirmative. But this is probably good enough, to be honest. This thing, well, it does have a decent amount of armor. This might not kill it, actually. Copy that. We'll see. Yeah, barely got through the armor. Clustering rolls have not been in our favor here. That's for sure. So the Apollo moves up and doesn't do anything of note. But yeah, we expended basically our entire salvo there on that armor. Not been doing well on those clusters. So the assassin jumps down and doesn't fire. That is a terrible choice. It's now in point blank range of the wraith. Ready for orders. I'm going to advance our hoplite here. On We're not going to fire on the assassin over here. I think that's a terrible idea. But we can absolutely pot shot up over this direction on the Ignis again. We are rolling poorly. <laughs> that's for sure. That was like a 50% hit chance there. We did miss it. I mean, it's not shocking that we miss a 50% hit chance, but we've been missing a lot and getting just generally poor rolls on clustering and on hit odds and it hasn't been going amazingly well the odds have not been in our favor of late but that's okay standing by we can just adjust Rolling. the odds with sheer quantity of ordnance i'm going to shoot down this dragoon now we've got a 50 percent hit chance on it it's Fire rear arc and up. there we go the dragoon is out of here so that is fine mech destroyed However, because it's been awkward, this very simple mission is taking a little while. We've still got our centaur chasing down the remaining unit up over here. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit. So it is time to put a cut in here. As soon as we get to our turn, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's going to be after this firefly moves. It positioned terribly there. That's not a good position for it. The centaur is already in rear arc. But it is time to put a cut in here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we'll wrap this one up. It's not going to be difficult. It's just mildly awkward, right? So that's fine. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.